Good morning, Hosho staff, students, and families. Ya yeah, Ben. We're ready to start our day. So everybody, please stand. Place your right hand over your heart. Our voices are off and bodies are still. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We the people of the United States, in order to form a more perfect union, establish justice, ensure domestic tranquility, provide for the common defense, promote the general welfare, and secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and our posterity to ordain and establish this Constitution for the United States of America. Good morning, everyone. Today is Wednesday, October 14th, and we're ready to start with some music. Do you remember the piece that Mrs. Neff has selected for us this week? I'm going to play it. You tell me what we're listening to and who composed it. Okay, what were we listening to? Vivaldi's Four Seasons Autumn, right. So we don't forget, what are we listening to here? Did you hear those violins? Boy, it sounded cold. What were we listening to? Of all these four seasons, winter. Winter's coming, friends. That's right. Okay, how about this one? that. That's right. Wolfgang, Amadeus, Mozart, Eine Kleine Nacht Music, or Serenade number 13. Very good. All right, kindergarten, one more. Tell me what we're listening to. Also by Wolfgang, Amadeus, Mozart, Twelve Variations of Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. Yes, the alphabet song, Ba Ba Black Sheep, also tunes to the same music. Okay, art. So art this week, we have an Italian artist from around 1500. So about the time of Leonardo da Vinci, we have a different artist named Raphael. And this is School of Athens. That's right, around 1510. And where if we wanted to see this fresco, remember fresco, what's a fresco? A painting, watercolors done on wet plaster so the colors seep right in. And when the plaster dries, then we have our uh, painting right on the wall. So what, uh, where would we find this? If we wanted to go somewhere to find this painting and see it for ourselves, 
Where would we have to go? We have to go to Rome. That's right. You'd have to go to Rome and to the Vatican and go see. Because remember we talked about how the church commissioned um, paintings? So they would pay artists to come in and paint the wall. So rather than coming in and painting with just regular paint, they had them come in and, and do these beautiful paintings that have survived for all these years, 500, 600 years in some cases. Okay, so um, the Vatican is a place in Rome. And here in the United States, we have some buildings that we want to know and be able to recognize. Yes. White House. Which branch of government is that? Executive. What's this? U.S. Supreme Court. Which branch of government is that? Judicial. That's right. There's a confirmation hearing going on right now in this building for a justice to sit in this building. So Amy Coney Barrett and all of our, sen our senators are right now here making a decision about whether she would be confirmed, and if she is, she would be the next justice. So in this building is the U.S. Capitol building. That's right. And Washington Monument. Okay, friends. We've been studying the Bill of Rights because it's important to know our Constitution uh, because our government is based on we the people. And so we, the people, have to know what it is that we're supposed to do. And so that's why we have the Constitution, right? To establish justice, ensure domestic tranquility. All those things are in that document. But it's we, the people. We don't, we don't pay anybody to um, run our government. We don't have a king, right? We, we have senators and representatives who represent us. They work for us. They work for you. So when you become an adult and you vote somebody in, you're their boss, right? We the people are in charge of our government. It's not somebody in government who's in charge of us. Right now we have President Trump. Is he in charge of us? No, sir. It's we the people. We the people. And government gets its powers from the people. And that's why we have to remember and know and learn about our Constitution and what our rights are. So we... Um, been studying the first 10 amendments, which are called the Bill of Rights. That's right, they're your rights, they're my rights, they've been our grandparents' rights, they've been, uh, they'll hopefully be our children's and our grandchildren's rights. So, the First Amendment, let's say it together, and we'll say the Second Amendment together, and then for the Third Amendment, because we're just learning that one, I'll say it, you repeat it, and then we'll practice that one in that way. Okay, First Amendment. Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof or abridging the freedom of speech or of the press or the right of the people peaceably to assemble and to petition the government for a redress of grievances. Second Amendment. A well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. Third Amendment. No soldier shall in time of peace be quartered in any house without the consent of the owner, nor in time of war, but in a manner prescribed by law. Good. All right, let's say it again. No soldier shall in time of peace be quartered in any house without the consent of the owner, nor in time of war, but in a manner prescribed by law. Good. 
I hope you're learning these and practicing them, saying them out loud with me so that we can learn them just like we did when we learned the Declaration of Independence and we learned the Gettysburg Address and the preamble to the Constitution. I forgot to do the poem, so let's back up to that. So do you remember who the poet is? He has a comma in his name. Not too many people have a comma in their name or title. So it's Alfred Lord Tennyson. That's right, Alfred Tennyson. He's a lord, uh, an English lord. All right. So he wrote the poem, The Eagle, a fragment. He clasped the crag with crooked hands, close to the sun in lonely lands. Ringed with the azure world he stands. The wrinkled sea beneath him crawls. He watches from his mountain walls, and like a thunderbolt, he falls. So what do you think about that eagle? Why is he falling like a thunderbolt, right? And it's interesting that he says falls because I feel like it'd be more like dives, right? Like a thunderbolt. But I guess falls rhymes with walls. So maybe that's why he chose it. I don't know, but maybe there's another reason. But like a thunderbolt, right? Like a bolt of lightning, he falls. So what is he doing when he's falling? Probably with his... What does it say? His crooked hands went to go dive down and maybe get a fish or something swimming down there in the, in the uh, ocean. So with crooked hands, right? Does an eagle have hands? No. What do they have? Like claws, talons, right? And, uh, but why would he say hands? Crooked hands. That he has crooked hands. Hmm. Sometimes poets do that. They try to, um, personify, right, to make uh, something that's not human have human qualities. And maybe that's to make us think about how are we alike or how are we different from the thing that he's describing, right, with crooked hands. So he makes it almost like, personifies it to be like a human, make it like a person. Makes this eagle have these person qualities or human qualities of a crooked hand. And he dives like a thunderbolt to go get his prey out of the ocean. Hmm. Interesting. There's a lot more to talk about with that poem. So we'll do that some more tomorrow. So no birthdays today. Um, and we have practiced our um, Bill of Rights. Uh, so that is all we have for today. Um, I made a mistake yesterday. Uh, the PE, bring your your family to PE, and I apologize, Mrs. Toledo Ballet. It is next week is bring your 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 family to PE. But hopefully everyone went and checked that out and found that out when they went into Canvas. So uh, next week, bring your family to PE week, and Mrs. Ballet has some things for us to do. And thank you, Mrs. Toledo Ballet, for all your hard work. Um, so the end of the quarter, we've ended the quarter, we started the second quarter, probably Monday we'll have some um, materials here if your student needs new books or new um, materials for her, his or her class, that those will be ready. Uh, so students, um, if you your teacher has told you you need something, let your parents know. Teachers will be reaching out also. Um, Report cards will probably come out in about two weeks because teachers are still uh, finalizing grades for everything that came in the last few days. And then after they finalize the grades, then we have to take the grades and look at them and, and decide what attendance was because people aren't always coming to school every day, so they're attending on the computer, so we have to figure all that out. So that will take us a little bit of time. So I'm hoping in two weeks we'll have those report cards out for you. And again, the grades are um, incomplete, pass, and not pass. If you haven't had a chance to get all of your work done, maybe you didn't have internet service or maybe there was some other issue, um, you will have time to continue to make those things up. Um, so we'll just keep working until we're back together again. Um, that's all we have for today, so let's do our student pledge. I will do the good, I will learn the true, and I will love the beautiful. And I hope you have a great day today.